It's no secret that Nigeria is the largest economy in Africa. What's more to her? With over three billion metric tons of iron ore deposits found in Kogi, Enugu, and Niger states, an estimated 10 million tons of lead zinc veins spread across many states in Nigeria. Over 7.5 million tons of barite in Taraba and Bauchi states, an abundance of lithium and gold in Nasarawa, Ogun state, and many more. Nigeria is blessed with a diverse mix of mineral deposits. The Nigerian government, through the Ministry of of solid minerals development is setting the pace to reposition Nigeria as an economic powerhouse. Join us every Monday, 16.30 GMT, and on Saturday, 9 hours GMT, for the program Uncovering Nigeria's Hidden Gems. Uncovering Nigeria's Hidden Gems. Where we highlight the activities of the solid mineral sector to discover the vast natural resources of the country and know more about the sector. Remember, Mondays at 16.30 GMT and Saturdays at 9 hours GMT. Uncovering Uncovering Nigeria's Nigeria's Hidden Gems. Gems. The new mines marshal is led by an assistant commandant of the Corps, Atta John Onoja, who is here to provide you more details about the marshals. The mining marshal came up as a result of the pressing need of Nigeria as a nation to take adequate care of the mining sector. And part of the core mandate of Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps is protection of critical national assets and infrastructure. To this end, there will be no agency that will be better positioned or poised to delivering such assignment or mandate other than NSCDC. Now, the Commandant General of Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, in the person of uh, Dr. Ahmed Abubakar Audi, MNI, in his usual manner of being very focused, very professional, and proactive, thought it wise that there is a need to further strengthen the role of NSCDC in that regard. Before now, NSCDC have been responsible for protection of critical national assets and infrastructure. But to have a specialized unit that will meet the pressing demand, talking about dwindling revenue from the mining sector, activities of illegal miners in Nigeria, the issues of insecurity and the relationship between illegal mining and threats within the Nigerian environment. We came up with the idea of setting up the Commandant General's Transport and Mining Marshal. And on the 1st of March, it was officially inaugurated by the Honorable Minister of Interior, a hardworking Nigerian young man, in the person of Dr. Lubumi Tunji Oju, that marked the occasion of civil defense day in Nigeria. And uh, from that moment, looking at the resolve of the Honorable Minister of Solid Minara in the person of uh, Dr. Alake Henry, he decided that what NACDC is doing is in tandem with the seven-point agenda of the Ministry of Solid Minera. The relationship or partnership between NACDC and Solid Minera is to achieve the task of combating illegal mining with the aid of mining police, which is one of the seven-point agenda of the Ministry of Solid Minera under his current administration. That led to the official unveiling of this particular operation by the Honorable Minister of Solid Minera on the 21st of March, 2024. And that marked the beginning of this operation. From then till now, the operation has been moving steadily and successfully. And the whole idea is to ensure that illegal mining is curbed to its barest minimum. And that is why 
able-bodied men, well trained from special forces and specialized training in this regard, came up together, were camped for a period of time to be ready for the task ahead, having known that it's an enormous task before the official unveiling in this particular ministry. Thank you. What is the current strength and deployment of the mining marshals across Nigeria? And are there plans for expansion or reinforcement? Okay, thank you very much. Um, from the commencement of the operation, the strength of mining marshal, we started with 2,220 operatives cutting across the whole country all the states of the federation and uh, as we speak there are still more personnel coming in we are still on the face of mobilizing more men because all the states of the federation will be adequately taken care of by the mining marshal in this regard and considering the assignments and the kind of training required there is a need to have a, a procedure that we are maintaining already where you get them, interview them, they pass through specialized training under the leadership of our able Commander General Dr. Ahmed Abubakar Audi, who have training as part of his cardinal focus under his administration. Thank you. Um, how do the mining marshals ensure that operators and other stakeholders in the sector comply with mining regulations and the laws? Most of the stakeholders acknowledge receipt of our notice. Thereafter, we started within FCT, speaking to other states. And what we do, each state we come, we inaugurate the operations there, commence operation, and the personnel, the operatives within that state, will now be fused in, we work with them, and leave those who are supposed to man that state and will proceed to other states. We have done that in several states and we are still proceeding to other states. So what strategies have um, has the NSCDC been able to use to prevent illegal mining and mineral theft? And what successes have been recorded so far? Okay, that's a good one. Uh, it is important to state clearly at this point that uh, the mining masha, the scope of our operation is principally anchored on ensuring full compliance to extant laws. Talking about uh, Nigeria Mineral Mining Act 2007 and mining regulations of 2011. And containing these documents, are relevant provisions that must be complied with by all intending investors in this sector or miners or companies or individuals who want to carry out one or two activities within this sector. And most of them, the Ministry of Solid Mineral is the home and mother of mining activity. So whatever you do is regulated by Ministry of Solid Mineral. So our duty specifically in this regard, is to ensure enforcement of these regulations that is already known to all miners in the country. It's already known. And now the strategy we employ is also the fact that we ensure that wherever we come to, we do, we we'll have intelligence about any legal mining activity in a place. Depending on the nature, there are peculiarities of cases. And this has helped in so many ways in cases we have handled, including cases that we have charged to court. So it has really helped. Responses from these agencies have helped us uh, a great deal. And they have the associations. Part of the people we communicated, communicated the association. They also acknowledged receipts, some of which have even sent delegations to our office for further details, and we notify them that we don't require any other thing than maximum cooperation that will ensure full compliance to mining regulations. And the entire essence of this is to see how at our own level and in our own time, 
we are able to contribute our own quota to ensuring that the dwindling revenue within the mining sector is improved. You spoke about writing letters to the companies. In the case of artisan illegal miners that don't even have companies, yes. how does the mining marshals, how do they handle that situation? Now, uh, the, like each case are peculiar and unique. Now, what we do in such situation, the artisanal miners, they, do, they are not the end users of what they mine. The artisanal miners, most times, are also patronized by some of these companies. So when we get into these communities, wherever we have artisanal miners, we enter there, ensure that when you are raised, you trace who they supply. Because if they don't have buyers, they won't continue engaging in such. So, and most times, when we get those they supply, you'll be compelled, you'll be compelled to ensure that whatever you do with such people, you regularize it. So far, in some places in Nasra and Kogi, we encounter such situation. At some point, traditional rulers will even come up and uh, own up to what they are doing. We advise them, and if you can achieve some aim without necessarily proceeding with uh, coercive means, we also welcome it. We've had situations where even traditional rulers become people updating us if people are trying to deviate from instructions of complying with extant laws. Okay. Um, in the case of arrest, since the unveiling of the mining marshals, yes. can you tell us, give us maybe a percentage of how many people have been arrested? How many illegal miners have been arrested so far? Okay, so far so good with arrested not less than 28 illegal miners. The latest, which was um, Kogi, and uh, ranging from offenses of uh, illegal mining activities on the site, illegal mining activity as it borders on illegal conveyance and possession of minerals, because every mineral one, in conveying it, you must comply with the regulation governing it. You cannot just get up and buy mineral the way you enter supermarkets and buy and start moving. Mineral buying centers are usually licensed. If you are operating a mining site, you are also supposed to, also supposed to have license. And one thing we must add here, because our experience on the field revealed that some persons feel when you have license, it means you are mining legally. No, you can have license valid and still be mining illegally. Reason being that from the office, your license is valid, but the usage might render your activity illegal. Because these licenses also have categories. If you are operating different from the category of your license, it's illegal. And again, um, you might, each, each license also have uh, specified cadastral units allocated to it. The idea of also conveying mineral without letters of identification is another issue that we have also discovered and we are enforcing compliance seriously and we are achieving results. Uh, every company, if you have a mineral buying license and uh, you are to convey mineral from one point to the other, it is important that you also have letter of identification for the driver conveying the mineral. In that letter of identification, details of where that mineral was won from, details of the driver, details of the mining license with which that mineral was won will be contained there. And it will give you an idea of the quantity, the tons being conveyed, to also give you an idea of where exactly is this company and what amount is this company supposed to pay as royalty. That's why you'll be able to relate royalty payment with the mineral. Otherwise, you have a situation where somebody will have receipt of royalty payment and still go to a different location and load mineral and still show you the receipt. Even though most of them do not even send that receipt while conveying them. So that is one thing we've been able to uh, inject in recent time. And I can assure you we are getting compliance already. Yesterday being Friday, two companies uh, called the office to confirm that just yesterday that they paid their royalties, including 
trucks and minerals in custody that were arrested. Upon investigation, drivers confessed that uh, they were conveying them illegally. And uh, having been educated, they liars with their company and they're already paying royalty. And that's the essence of what we are talking about. Though that does not absorb them from punishment. They can take corrections going forward, but that does not absorb them from punishment. But it's to show that we are achieving results in enforcement. Because the essence is that let the government not lose revenue. There should be no evasion. We should have a system where we can check the flow of minerals from location, one location to the other. And whatever you are mining, you should be able to be paid a due percentage of royalty to discover that, oh, there's a need to do it differently. There's a need to respect the law. There's a need to ensure we help these people succeed. I, I was on a site in Nasarawa. They were, they were having serious issues within them. And uh, it was gradually deteriorating. And when the uh, report got to us, it was not necessarily looking at who is mining legally or illegally at that point, but there was a need to restore peace and handle the issue of who is to mine and who is not to mine. Yeah. So we went there, the two communities, we had meeting with the two communities separately first on the same day. We met this community leader. From there, we met the other community leader. Then after the meeting, we agreed, and the, uh, the two community heads came together. And as I speak to you, I'm in touch with them. They even called me at interval. One of them even confessed to us that uh, the vigor with which we are doing this work, we pray we continue and uh, Nigeria will be a better place. So we have community leaders cooperating with us. Like I said earlier, it all boils down to approach. You cannot just meet somebody doing the wrong thing as a community leader and you expect him to just yield to force. No, community leaders, they are stakeholders in security. It's their domain. So we, we, we educate them to achieve results. Um, how do the mining marshals utilize technology to, en to enhance their operations? OK. Um, we engage, of course, if the, there is no security operation now that will not involve technology and succeed reasonably. So that we are doing, uh, mining Masha is really uh, poised to using technology. Like in the team, we have a, a drone pilot in the team. And uh, there are terrains that are not even motorable. The mining Masha is fully aware of the role and the importance of technology in effective prosecution of these tax or assignments. What's the command structure um, the chain of command within the mining marshals? Okay. Um, the, the command and general of Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps is the overall head of the NSCDC. And this team is directly under him. Now, the mining marshal has a commander which by the grace of God, I'm occupying that position. And the commander of Mining Masha oversees all the operations of Mining Masha nationwide. Now the commander is closely assisted by sub-commanders in states. These sub-commanders are in states. Now, the sub-commanders also have their two ICs. So the, the way the operation works is that Every deployment within every state is coordinated by the sub-commander of that particular state, supervised, approved, and authorized by the commander. Now, the commander operating from the National Headquarters Office visits all the states performing supervisory role. And most operations, most operations, the commander leads. Reason being that at this early stage, the focus of the operation must remain on the same page. 
So every state is under a sub commander. It's under a sub commander who reports directly to the commander. And in all of our operations, in all of our operations, we work in tandem with the regulations from the Ministry of Solid Mineral. And uh, it is the direct supervision and the uh, control of the Honorable Minister of Solid Mineral to carry out these operations nationwide. Direct supervision and control of the Minister of Solid Mineral. Lastly, before we go, I would like to ask you what are the biggest challenges facing the implementation of the mining marshals and how can they be addressed, if any? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so far, so good. Uh, we can say the commencement of the operation is a good one. And uh, despite the successes we are recording, it is normal that whatever you are starting will have one or two little challenges that are not uh, that are not supposed to be issues of serious concern. All you require is adjustment, adaptability, and you proceed. Because uh, for the first time in history of Nigeria, that the Minister of Solid Mineral is coming up with a project called Mining Masha to serve as mining police. So such challenges are issues that are being channeled appropriately. And I want to assure you that the Honorable Minister of Solid Minera is one Nigerian that you can count on any time, any day. So I do not feel there is a challenge that is requiring external attention. I will say he is doing so well, so far so good. And, uh, and we have this trust that uh, as we progress, According to operational requirements, you will continue to do because most times it calls to know the status and what needs to be done next. So, so you've not you've not experienced any challenge the, yet. No, there is no challenge that is of concern. Of concern, okay. There's, there's no okay. challenge that is of concern. Okay. Mm, it's a let me add by saying that the mining machine is a work in progress. Okay. It's a work in progress, and I enjoy the I enjoy the move. The challenges are coming. To, are surmounting them. Nigerians should see the mining masha as a Nigerian project, not an individual's project, not the project of the Minister of Solid Mineral, but a Nigerian project to save the mining sector because the mining sector needs to breathe. And the mining masha will stop at nothing. The mining masha will stop at nothing in ensuring full compliance to extant laws governing mining regulation in Nigeria. And whoever is found worthy, regardless of the position, the affinity, the law will take its course. It's important Nigerians begin to know that. And the mining sector will have to contribute reasonably as expected to the growth and development of Nigeria as a nation.